reminder, <coughs> reminder, please turn off or silence your electronic devices. Thank you. Our meditation today, just to know that there are opposites, does not make us chase the right side. There is yin and there is yin. There is black and there is white. There is this and there is that. It is often nothing but personal preference that we choose. But when it comes to things of a spiritual nature, though we are free to choose, the eternal consequences are either absolutely good or horribly bad. We know that Jesus came to save us, and he did. It takes baptism to become a Christian, and so we were. God did all this so that we might have at least a chance for salvation. The odds are not in our favor. More often than not, we choose selfishly, rejecting the cross. But it is this cross which is given to us from the hands of our Heavenly Father that we might submit freely to it and in the process find our salvation by accepting it. This is the mystery of the cross. It is one thing to know about it, but salvation comes only by living the cross. In a moment of silence, let us place ourselves in the presence of God. Please stand. Jerusalem, 
and set all its palaces afire and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest, while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of this people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of the land we hung up our harps. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. For there our captors asked of us the lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers urged us to be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. May my tongue cleave to my pelt if I remember you not, if I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Burn, full of love. They're nothing but the burning ones that they're called. 
And so the ones biting people, those who rebelled against God, they're the, ser the seraph serpents, the burning ones that are biting other people. So it's, it comes to all these things and, well, we need to come to the cross. There is no ifs and buts. And everything that happens in our lives is because God allows it to happen. Not one thing, not one thing happens without God not knowing and allowing it to happen. Like years ago in Africa, there was a servant of the king, and he was a Catholic, he was a Christian, and everything that happened, he always said, oh, thank you, God, thank you, it is so wonderful, everything, God, God does, everything is perfect. And the king was a pagan, didn't like it at all, he hated it, and so one time they went hunting, and so <laughs> as the ferocious tiger came, he didn't see him in time when the tiger came so close that he bit off his finger and he would have devoured him had his servant not saved his life. And so the king was very upset. He says, what about your God now that everything happens for a purpose? Yes, everything happens for a purpose. Look at this one. This is not a purpose God says I should have. God knows what he's doing. Just believe me. So the king didn't believe and so threw him into jail. So a few weeks later, he went on a hunting journey again, and he had different servant with him, and so they came, and this time it wasn't a ferocious animal, but it was uh, people eating humans, and so they, they were capturing them and took him captive and brought him into the village, and they had a festival and a dance that they had now, something to offer up to their gods, and so the king was ready to be made ready, and all of a sudden they realized a finger is missing. Let him go. Got away from here. You can't be a sacrifice to God because God needs a perfect sacrifice. And so he came back home and apologized to the servant whom we put into jail because he realized, you know, because the finger was missing, I was spared the life. So even the animal took my finger. I didn't see the very end for which it was called for. It's okay, I give you the freedom, but tell me one thing. What is the good thing about you? And I threw it to jail. How God let this happen? How did it help you? He says, well, King, he said, if I would not have been thrown into jail, I would have been the one with you on the journey. And since you had only nine fingers, I had ten, they would have sacrificed me. So everything that happens, God allows to happen for a purpose. We just don't know why. Until the time when we come to see things. And that's that's what we are. We gotta look for how God works in our lives. And once the thing, once you find God, then you gotta spread the word. You become an evangelizer. You know what an evangelizer is? An evangelizer is a pauper who tells another pauper where the food is to be had. So you, these are all beggars and paupers before God, but we have one thing. We know where we can get strength and food from God, and we have to tell other people to find that food as well, that they be strengthened and carry on the journey. So it's not easy, but see, but if God would have said, I forgive you of your faults, we know that God was very gracious. He didn't have to go through the cross and the passion, but he did. And so St. Thomas wrote about this why. For many noble symbolic reasons, it was suitable that our Lord, dying for us by his own will, should have chosen the death of the cross. This mode of death was the most feared and was considered the most degrading. To show that the upright man need fear no mode of death, to indicate that no mode of death can solid the innocent, to give full and final evidence of his love for mankind and his hatred for sin, our Lord chose the death of the cross, and since he died for all, he chose to die in the open, on an eminence with arms outstretched to all mankind. So that's to show his love, that's why he died this ignominious death, and he caused us to participate in it. So when he got a little suffering, a little hurt, a little ouchy here or there, a little big things, cancer, God knows what else, say, thank you, Lord, because this will be the means of my salvation, and I can offer it up also for my loved ones, for those who are close to me. May God would have mercy and touch them as well. The cross. John Newton wrote this little little poem. In, in evil long I took delight, unawed by shame or fear, 
till a new object struck my sight and stopped my wild career. I saw one hanging on the tree in agonism blood, who fixed his languid eyes on me as near his cross I stood. Sure, never till my latest breath can I forget that look. It seemed to charge me with his death, though not a word he spoke. My conscience felt and owned the guilt and plunged me in despair. I saw my sins, his blood had spilled and helped to nail him there. Alas, I knew not what I did, but now my tears are vain. Where shall my trembling soul be hid? For I, the Lord, have slain. A second look he gave, which said, I freely, I freely all forgive. This blood is for thy ransom paid. I die that thou mayest live. Thus, by this head, death my sin displays in all its blackest hue. Such is the mystery of grace, it seals my pardon too. With pleasing grief and mournful joy, my spirit now is filled. That I should such a life destroy, yet live by him I killed. Let's be stand and profess our faithful apostles' creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, for there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We pray that you hear our pleas and help us grow in our faith. souls be the principal aim of the church and that its leaders live by the way of the cross we pray to the Lord Lord that our country be set free from tyrants and good and holy leaders be placed in their stead so as to protect the God-given rights of its citizens we pray to the Lord Lord for Juan Carlos and all seminarians may our good Lord always give us shepherds after the heart of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we be protected from nature's fury and man-made disasters, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who shun the sacrament of marriage by living as they please, may they be reconciled to God and the Church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Silently, we now pray our needs to our God. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, as you hear our prayers, grant that we may truly follow your Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever.
We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal revenue, O Lord. Pray that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as a fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as to that end we acclaim. Sanctus, 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 Sanctus,
Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. On this day, we toys take up the moody,
Thank you. 